Hello and welcome to Digit's YouTube channel. Today we shall review the Asus ROG Strix SCAR 2. Ah, that's a long name with the RTX GPU. So let's just for the sake of uh, my peace of mind, let's just call this the SCAR 2. Asus had launched the SCAR 2 a few months ago with the updated GTX 1060, 1070 GPUs, but now at CES, Nvidia announced are the RTX GPUs for laptops. So of course, like everybody else, Asus also updated their existing laptops with RTX graphic cards. So we got ourselves the 2060 variant of the SCAR 2. What is it powered by? It's got an Intel i7 8750H. It's got 16 GB of RAM. Uh, that's actually eight GB sticks, two of them, thankfully, so that you have dual channel configuration. You've got a 256 GB NVMe drive from uh, Western Digital and along with that, a one terabyte uh, Fire CUDA SSHD. The display is a full resolution IPS panel with 144 Hz refresh rate. And we're gonna get into that specifically in a bit. So with all of this packed into the same chassis that we have seen with the SCAR 2's GTX variant, uh, let's see how this laptop did in our test labs. All right, so we're gonna first and foremost talk about the gaming performance, which is obviously what's probably the most important thing about a gaming laptop. So I'm gonna to refer to my notes because I don't want to give you guys wrong information. Uh, on Battlefield 5 with DLSS and RTX turned on, with the graphics settings set to ultra, mind you, we clocked 60 FPS average with, uh, on Hellblade, Send a Sacrifice, with the, it's a non-RTX title, we had 90 FPS average, Shadow of the Tomb Raider ran at 74 FPS average, and Metro Exodus with ultra settings, RTX and DLSS turned on, ran at 41 average FPS. Metro is just a beast. It's completely destroying machines these days. It's probably the new crisis. So that's at ultra settings. And when we turned the settings one level down, which we refer to as high, uh, for the sake of convenience. Um, you know, we saw the frame rates jump up to 83 for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Apex Legends clocked 108 FPS. Battlefield 5 was at 78 FPS. So all in all, numbers jumped anywhere between 15 to 30% depending on the game. Very impressive, no complaints there. But here's the thing, if you turn off RTX on let's say a title like Battlefield or even Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we noticed a minimum of 15% jump in average frame rates. So obviously RTX does take a toll on the performance. DLSS is supposed to kind of offset that, but you know, uh, but in a game like Metro Exodus, which uses global illumination for RTX, we, that's probably where we will see the biggest jump in frame rates when you turn RTX off. So all in all, in terms of performance numbers for gaming, once again, extremely impressive, uh, could have been slightly better and you know, but this is a 2060, it's not the 2070 like we've seen on the Alienware M15. In terms of creative workloads, again, we used uh, 500 raw files from a Nikon D850 and loaded them into Lightroom. Exporting 50 files, 100 files, and then 500 files, we clocked timings of about two minutes, four minutes, and close to 15 minutes. So you can ex see the exact numbers in the charts that are going in front of the screen right now. Let's talk about the display. Now, we measured the display's color accuracy using our spider color meter, and we found that the display is able to reproduce about 98% of the sRGB color spectrum, which is very commendable for an IPS panel. They can go to 200%, but this is coming at 98% of accuracy, not bad. But what we did notice was a little amount of light bleed that pops up in the bottom right corner when there is an all black uh, image on the screen. Now, IPS panels are susceptible to light bleed. It is just part of their nature. And thankfully, when you're gaming, when you're watching a movie, when you're even typing, whatever it is you do, when there's like active content on the screen, you don't notice the light bleed at all. In fact, even in games like Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice and Doom, which have a lot of dark scenes, the light bleed does not have any uh, adverse impact. So pretty impressive. So that's the display. The other aspect about a gaming machine that we are very concerned about is heat. Now we clocked the exhaust vent uh, pushing out heat at about 58 degrees Celsius. 
and the WASD keys remained cool at about 33 Celsius. And that's because what ASUS has done is they've placed a fan right under the WASD keys. And what this fan does, it sucks in air from the top. So when you've got your hands on the keyboard, there's cool air being pulled in. So it cools your hand, it cools the keys, and then everything is exhausted out the back. The downside is, unfortunately, there is also an exhaust vent on the right. Now, when you're gaming with an external mouse, and if like me, you like to have your mouse a little closer to the laptop, then you're gonna feel the heat from the right side of the vent because when you're gaming, the ra fans ramp up to 100% and they really, really push out hot air. So I noticed that while I was gaming, there was a lot of heat hitting my hand and I kind of had to put it a little away, like maybe about uh, six to eight inches away. And that was not necessarily the most comfortable way for me to play, but maybe that works for you. So you'll have to kind of figure that out. But definitely within the first five inches from the laptop, you will feel the heat from the air vents. Now, in terms of the construction, the laptop is built fairly solid. It's got, it uses the same uh, solid, good quality plastic as the previous version of the machine. That is the non-RTX ver version of the machine, which ASUS still sells. The keyboard is very good. It's got amazing feedback, 1.8 millimeters of travel for a really, really nice gaming and typing experience. In fact, I love this keyboard for typing far more than I do for gaming. I mean, it's good for gaming, but for typing, it's amazing. So all in all, again, once again, ASUS has a fairly impressive laptop, gaming laptop on its hands. And because they're not discontinuing the GTX variants, users, buyers, gamers like you have now four options that you can choose from. So that's, again, a very little reason to complain, except for the fact that, yes, it is pretty thick. It's about 2.5 inches in thickness. Um, and traveling with it is not exactly easy and it also weighs about 2.4 kilograms. So there is that. And then there's the additional weight of the 230 watt power brick. So to wrap this up, the ASUS ROG Strix SCAR2 with the RTX 2060 scores an overall of 80 on the digit rating, thanks to its pretty impressive, solid, reliable gaming performance, good creative workloads, um, very well-controlled cooling, at least for the primary WASD keys, solid build, um, offering great repairability and you can of course open it up and replace your SSD, you can replace the hard drive, you can even change out the RAM and the wireless module. Um, where it does lose out is in terms of its thickness, its weight and that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching this video. In case you liked it, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button or just share this video with your friend who may be interested in buying a gaming laptop. Thank you guys for watching.